Welcome to the Tell Me What I Need to Know series. This unit discusses the consolidation of the financial statements of a parent and a wholly owned subsidiary at the time of acquisition and again one year later. Consolidation is performed using the acquisition method since this is the only permitted method for acquisitions that occur after 2008. In the acquisition method, assets and liabilities of acquired entities are measured at fair value. In accounting for consolidation of controlled groups originating in or before 2008, the purchase method of accounting was allowed and for certain controlled groups that combined prior to 2001, the pooling method was permitted. Accountants need to be familiar with all three of these methods because combinations that were effected prior to these dates are permitted to continue to consolidate their financial statements using these methods. To keep the example simple, it's assumed that the parent acquired 100% of the subsidiary's outstanding equity for cash equal to the subsidiary's book value. It's also assumed that the parent company will account for the subsidiary using the equity method. The example illustrates the case of a company with only one controlled investee. In practice, companies often control more than one investee and must consolidate its financial statements with more than one other company. Consolidation of the financial statements of two companies is required under two distinct scenarios. The first scenario occurs when two entities combine and only one legal and accounting entity survives, as in a statutory merger or statutory consolidation. In these cases, the accounts of the two entities are consolidated once and for all in a permanent combination and the resultant consolidated accounts become the financial accounts of the new entity. The second scenario occurs when both companies retain their separate identities. In this case, each company continues to maintain its own accounting records, but the financial statements of both companies must be combined every year to report consolidated financial statements. In this case, the investor company is referred to as the parent company, and the investee company is referred to as the subsidiary company. Control is presumed to be present when a parent company owns greater than 50% of the outstanding stock of its subsidiary. Do be aware, though, that it is possible that a majority ownership may be present without control. For example, if the subsidiary company were in legal reorganisation. In this case, the investee company would be an unconsolidated subsidiary and the only evidence of its relation to the investor company would be the investment account on the investor's balance sheet. Do also be aware that control may alternatively be achieved with a minority ownership, for example if there is significant intercompany dependency. The financial statements of a parent subsidiary group are required to be consolidated under GAAP because although in form the two companies are separate legal and accounting entities, in substance they behave as a single entity because of the control that the parent exercises over the subsidiary. Consolidation of financial statements addresses this issue because consolidation reports the financial statements of separate but related companies as if they were one entity. The consolidation process combines the individual statements of two or more related companies which preserves details of the individual statements. Note that the parent continues to account for the subsidiary in its accounting records on a daily basis using the equity method. If the parent were to also report the activities of the subsidiary using the equity method, only one line of information would appear on the parent's balance sheet regarding its subsidiary, namely the investment in subsidiary account. Similarly, only one line on the parent income statement would describe the results of operations of the subsidiary, namely the equity in the income of subsidiary account. This one-line accounting for the subsidiary obscures the detail of the subsidiary's accounts and under GAAP is considered insufficient presentation for a controlled group. In principle, the consolidation process is very straightforward. The separate financial statements, prepared from the separate books of the entities to be consolidated, the consolidated entity has no books of its own, are simply added together. 
Next, certain intercompany accounts are eliminated or adjusted. Accountants use a consolidated worksheet to take the account balances of the separate legal and accounting entities and methodically make eliminations and adjustments. The resultant consolidated financial statements report only the transactions of a single consolidated entity with outside parties. This slide illustrates a consolidation worksheet prepared as of the date of the business combination, i.e. the date at which the parent became able to exercise control over the subsidiary. This procedure is the same whether the subsidiary entity is created or acquired. The first columns list the account balances of the parent and subsidiary or subsidiaries if there's more than one subsidiary to be consolidated. The next two columns contain what we refer to as elimination and adjusting entries, and this is where the actual consolidation work is documented. Note that these entries do not appear in the actual accounts of the consolidated group. They are made for consolidation purposes only and appear only on the worksheet. For this reason, the entries have to be repeated each year that the consolidated statements are prepared, as there is not a permanent record of them in the separate books of the parent and subsidiary or subsidiaries. In our simple example, because this is a consolidation worksheet created at the date of consolidation, because 100% of the subsidiary was purchased at book value, and because the parent accounts for the subsidiary using the equity method, only one simple elimination entry is necessary. The investment in subsidiary account is credited and the subsidiary capital accounts are debited to remove them from the consolidated balance sheet. This removes all intercompany ownership accounts. Some textbooks also describe an additional entry to adjust the property plant and equipment and accumulated depreciation accounts. If the parent had actually acquired the individual assets and liabilities of the subsidiary, the amount paid for the items of property, plant and equipment would become the new cost basis for these assets on the books of the parent. To simulate that situation, an entry can be made to remove the pre-acquisition balance of accumulated depreciation that exists in the subsidiary's books and reduce the property, plant and equipment account of the subsidiary by the same amount. The effect on consolidated book value of property, plant and equipment is unchanged, but it disregards the old book values on the books of the subsidiary. Consolidated totals are then calculated by summing horizontally across the worksheet. This slide illustrates a consolidation worksheet prepared one year after the date of the business combination. Note that after one year, the balance in the investment account on the parents' books has changed per the entries that are made using the equity method of accounting for an investee. Specifically, the investment account has increased by the investor's pro rata share of investee net income, in this case 100%, and it has decreased by the investor's pro rata share of investee dividends, again 100% in this case. The new balance in the investment account is thus $127,000, the beginning balance of $120,000 plus the $9,000 parent share of subsidiary net income minus the $2,000 parent share of the subsidiary dividends. Notice that the post-consolidation entry to eliminate the investment account therefore includes not only a debit to the subsidiary capital accounts, but also a debit to the parent's income statement account income from subsidiary and a credit to the subsidiary dividends declared account on the statement of changes in retained earnings. Once again, consolidated totals are calculated by summing horizontally across the worksheet. 